I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, and in this video, I'm going to be working to simplify suspension so that we can empower you to get the most out of your suspension on your motorcycle. So we all know motorcycles have a lot of technology in them. There's so much going on and it can be really overwhelming trying to work out which bits of information we really need to know about and how we can utilize our time and resource to learn the most important things about a motorcycle. So this video is in a series of videos which I'm partnering with Ulin Suspension for, talking about suspension with the aim of trying to empower more of us to take control of our suspension and get our suspension set up better on our motorcycles. So this one is suspension for dummies, and I'm not calling you a dummy. It's more about thinking about the fact that suspension is really quite technical. There's a lot that goes on inside these kinds of shocks and the suspension setup on motorcycles. But we don't need to know about every single intricate detail of suspension to be able to get some improvements for our riding and our motorcycles. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what suspension is, why it's important. We're then gonna go into some of the key vocabulary words that you're gonna hear people using when they talk about suspension. I'm then gonna list a couple of examples of feelings or reactions that you might be getting from your motorcycle and they will give you a bit of an idea as to whether your suspension is set up right for you because if I say one of them and you go wait my bike's done that it will be a good sign to you to know that hang on my suspension must be not quite right and then we'll move on to some things that you can do four steps to get the most out of your suspension set up so that you can get the best results in your riding. So let's go straight into it. What is suspension? Now we've probably all seen the springs and the forks on our motorcycles. The suspension is the mechanics between your wheels and your tires and the overall motorcycle. The sole purpose or core purpose of our suspension is to keep the contact of your motorcycle wheels and tires with the ground. And if we think about the terrain, the road, the tarmac, the rocks, the bumps, everything that we're gonna be going through, there's a lot of external forces that are gonna be pushing our tires and bike away from the ground. And the suspension's job is to keep it planted and grounded. Because if your wheels are off the ground, you're not gonna have anything. You're just going to be floating, you're not going to have control, you're not going to have steering, you'll have no braking, no acceleration, and it will start to get quite scary very quickly. So the suspension is there to absorb and smooth out the ride so that you as a rider continue across the terrain and the wheels of the bike are doing this underneath to absorb everything. That, in a very simplistic term, is what your suspension is there to do. When you then start to talk about suspension, you're going to hear all kinds of vocabulary. And it's at this point where I think a lot of us start to shell up and switch off and think we're way outside of our depth and I don't really know how to continue this conversation because I don't understand. So let's talk about some of the key words that you might hear when it comes to suspension talk. So the first one is your preload and your sag. So the preload is the amount of tension that is put onto a spring before any external forces. So this is the spring, which is on the outside of the suspension, and the force that's applied to that before you've started to do anything. Not so important at this point in the conversation. The bit that you're gonna be a little bit more needing to tune into is your rider sag. Now, when you have a motorcycle, there is the weight of the motorcycle going onto the spring and the suspension setup. And you're then going to be adding your rider's weight to that spring. And setting the sag 
it's really important to make sure that your suspension is set up in the optimized position of the range that that suspension can give you when you think about the forces going up and down. And the easiest way to sort of look at that is if you look at your, your bike and you can see its neutral position, so we've got the example here, if you were then to put the rider's weight onto the bike, that suspension is going to drop and you're going to be able to set that sag to the optimum level for you as a rider. Now there is going to be another video in this series that will give you the how-to on setting your sag, so do check that one out. Next up, we're gonna be talking about damping and the damping is a really critical part of the internal elements of what is happening with your suspension to support the spring. Now, if we were to take a spring on its own and compress it, it would push back out and you could end up with a bouncy ball where the weight of you and the bike bounce up and down on top of this spring, which is gonna be pretty uncomfortable and you're gonna be like, wee, 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 like a bouncy ball. The damping is there to control the compression and the rebound of the spring. So I'm trying to keep this nice and simple so that we can think about it logically in our mind. So if we've got a spring and we hit a rock, the spring and our suspension is going to be compressed upwards. That's the compression, the force pushing into it. You've then got the rebound, which is when the spring then returns back to its original neutral position or back down into the hole or the bump that you've, you've gone into. And the compression and the rebound settings are really important for the goal of having a smooth ride. The optimum is the rider being just gliding along and the undercarriage of the wheels of the bike going up and down rebounding and compressing, absorbing everything. While I have the spring in my hand, the spring weight is another one that's important. As we get to the next part of the video, I'm going to be talking about things that you can do to improve your suspension. And the spring weight is something that I'm going to mention there. But a spring is not all the same. Now, if we look at motorcycles, they are a one size fits all. You buy this Honda CRF, for example, and it's going to become with a OEM, original manufacturer spring, and they tend to be made for the average rider, which does vary via model or bike or manufacturer. But if we take an example of my hard enduro bike, the average rider for the spring in that bike was 85 kilos. Okay, I'm probably not far off 85 kilos right now because I am carrying a, an extra human, but I am 62 kilos as a normal rider. And so an OEM spring is too stiff for me as a rider. And if you're gonna be riding with a spring that's too stiff, it's gonna be like being on a rodeo ball. So the spring weight is something that you really wanna be thinking about, making sure that that spring is the right weight for you. I've kind of jumped on to the next bit of the video, but spoiler alert, spring weight is the strength of the spring and the resistance it's going to give to the weight and the forces applied to it. Bottoming out, it's got nothing to do with your bottom, it's more about the suspension. So if you think about the range that your suspension has, bottoming out is when you apply so much force to your spring, and your suspension system that it comes all the way to the maximum range that it has and you're gonna hit quite a hard stop. It could be quite jarring when you get it and it's something that you generally want to be able to have your suspension set up that you're not gonna have. And let's say you're a motocross rider where you probably wanna have one bottom out per lap because that shows that you're using the full range of your suspension. But we're trying to keep this nice and simple. Bottoming out is where you've applied more force to your suspension setup than it is designed to absorb based on the setup of that suspension. Okay, clicks is the next thing you're gonna think about. And the clicks is relating to the adjustment that you can do for the damping on the suspension. So we talked about the compression and the rebound and on depending on what suspension system you have. So here's an example of an Olin aftermarket suspension that could go on this bike. Here at the top, 
there is a twisty thing. <laughs> we don't, I don't want to add any more tech words. So this is where you can twist it and it will click. And the clicks is relating to how you can change the damper settings into that suspension. Now, depending on the suspension, whether you're doing the rebound, the compression, etc., is going to change where those clicks are. But the clicks is the setting as such for changing those elements. Hopefully, I've kept that nice and simple. If at this point you feel like, ah, you've said a few too many words, my recommendation is just to rewind the video and watch them again and really try and think about the geometry of what's happening to a bike as you're riding and how those words would apply. But suspension doesn't have to be as terrifying as the world seems to make it feel. So what we're going to do now is think about some of the symptoms that your bike could be giving you, which are a sign that your suspension probably needs to be set up more correctly. Bottoming out, mentioned it already, but an easy example here, you've got your suspension range. If you're bottoming out, you're gonna be hitting a really hard stop on the end of your suspension. Now you're gonna feel it if you bottom out because it will be quite aggressive. A trick that you can do to see how much of your suspension you're using is have these little markers. Some suspension will have them as standard, but if yours doesn't, you can simply get a cable tie, pop it around, make sure it's on the high side at the start of your ride, and then have a look at the end of the ride, and you'll be able to see how much of your suspension travel you're using. And if you're really not using much, it's a very big sign that your suspension isn't set up. And obviously, if it's pushed all the way down to the bottom, it's another good sign. Excessive front end nosedive when you're braking is another one. Now, when you brake, the deceleration is going to naturally put more weight onto the front suspension and the front tire, which you want. You do want more traction going into your front tire to enable it to bite with the terrain and help you slow down. But you also have to have the balance between keeping the traction on your rear tire and not having too excessive a nosedive. So if you feel like you're going right forward and your back's going really light, that's another sign. A bouncy or an unstable ride. If you're hitting bumps and the bike is then hitting the bump and then continuing to kind of bounce after it like a bouncy ball would, that's a massive sign. Even if you're in the harshest terrains, if you're feeling like you're constantly being bucked around and feeling every single bump and rock out there, that is not your suspension being optimised. You're pulling on the throttle, accelerating away. It can be a lot of power on that motorcycle. You're going to expect the front end to go a little bit light, but too light with the rear end squatting right down is going to take away your control yet another sign of that suspension. You want to get it around those tight corners. If you feel like you're constantly just not quite able to get it around those corners as smoothly as you should with the power and the speed that you want, maybe it's understeering or oversteering, that is another telltale sign that your suspension isn't set up correctly. Now, I've given you just a small handful of some of the symptoms that you might be feeling on your motorcycle. And if any of these rodeo rides, wallowy, bouncy, a little bit less comfortable, feels like it's something that you're getting from your motorcycle, then you definitely need to keep watching because now let's talk about four key things that you can do to get the most out of your suspension on your motorcycle and you do not need to be a suspension expert an engineer or a mechanic or anything technical promise you this is suspension for everybody so let's go back to the classroom we are going to talk about how you can improve your suspension so the first thing you've got to do is go back to that spring rate conversation we had before as I mentioned, not every spring is for every rider. You need to make sure that the springs in your motorcycle, both rear and front, are for the weight of you as a rider. Get out the manual, the tech sheet for your motorcycle and work out what load rating, rider rating your spring is in your motorcycle. And if it is not for your weight, then get yourself online and find yourself the right weighted spring. So Olin's a really good example of a company where you can get 
a whole range of different manufacturers, brands, etc., springs to be able to pop them into your motorcycle. Now, I did promise you that you didn't need to have any technical knowledge. Changing the spring is something that is achievable at home, but you can also obviously get a service provider such as Ireland's network to install those for you as well. That's number one, really, really critical. Like the most important thing to start with is making sure you've got the right spring. You're then gonna move on to number two, which is setting your sag. I am going to have another video on my channel on how to set up your sag. It's not a challenging process. You're pretty much gonna need you, your bike, your kit, a tape measure, and someone to help you do it. So set your sag to make sure that your suspension for your bike and weight is set in the, the best optimum position for the range of the suspension that you have got. Number three is then the dampers, and that is where we get into the clicks. Don't be afraid of the clicks. You can change and adjust the settings on most bike suspension, a lot of bike suspension. It's completely irreversible, and it's something that you can have a go and play with at home. You don't need to worry about breaking anything. Nothing catastrophic is going to happen, but change the suspension clicks. Normally it's recommended that you go back to zero and then click your way up. Work out what that setting is. Write it down so you don't forget what you put it on. Go out for a ride and see how it feels. Does it feel better? Are you bottoming out less? Are you feeling less wallowing when you bounce into things? Are you feeling a bit more confidence going to the corners? Have a play and don't be afraid of having a play with those clicks because you can really make some great refinements to your bike to improve that rebound and compression on the suspension. And then if you feel like you're still not quite getting it right, it is worth checking out a suspension specialist such as ones that are available through the Ulan network and the Island Network will enable you to have your suspension both serviced and also set up correctly for yourself as a rider for the sort of terrain and conditions you're doing. You'll be able to talk to the, the specialist and let them know enough about you for them to apply their knowledge and experience to get it set up perfectly for you. But it's all stuff that is completely at the realms of possible for everyday riders back at home. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to maximize your suspension setup for you. With the right suspension setup, you will get so much more performance out of your motorcycle. You'll get a lot less fatigue because you won't be being kicked and bucked around or bounced around on the bike. You're gonna have a lot more trust and confidence in your motorcycle because you're going to get a really reliable and consistent reaction from your bike as you're going into hitting things. Do make sure you are getting your motorcycle suspension serviced. There's another video on how to look after your suspension as well with some top tips, so check that out. But at the end of the day, the suspension is the number one modification that I would recommend that you do on your motorcycle. It's personal to you as a rider, and it will massively improve your speed on a bike. Suspension is speed, and when you get that confidence, it's incredible how much you can improve and grow in your skill on a rider. I remember when I first changed the, the spring in my very first enduro bike. This is back before I did Red Bull Romaniacs, and I think I was probably 30% quicker almost immediately because I was no longer being bucked around by that really stiff original spring that the bike came with. Now, I've said this video is suspension for dummies. We are not dummies. We can empower ourselves with knowledge. And if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to get them in the comments and let me, let me try and support you with the answers. If you think there's anything critical that I've missed in this video, please get it in the comments as well. And let's just try and grow a nice community and space where we can all talk and be honest and learn and try and get the most out of our enjoyment with motorcycles. There's a little bell and there's a subscribe button and it would be really awesome if you could tick those so that you know about my future videos. I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike. Thanks so much for watching.